What is up, Vintage Gamers? Wednesday Night Vintage League. Today, I let Twitch chat slash Twitter slash the Discord uh, vote on what they wanted to see played. And the winner of the poll was more Luris Ledger Shredder Control. Uh, I've been really enjoying this deck. I've been playing a bunch of leagues off stream, uh, trying to figure out how to make this deck better. Uh, and I have a new version today to show you. Uh, the differences between this and the challenge deck, uh, we've gotten rid of the Saga and the Strip Mine from the uh, from the land section. We've gone up to four Bobble. I was really happy with how Bobble played with Shredder. Um, so we're, we're up to four Bobble now. Uh, I have some other changes. I, I'm down. No more Misdirection, but I did add Gush. I do, I do like Gush a lot in this deck, so the Gush has been quite good. Uh, I am playing some Dothy Voidwalkers. It's kind of a way to make us a non-zero percent chance to beat Dredge uh, and Bazaar in game ones. Uh, that was kind of the, the role of the strip mine before, where Dothy Voidwalker has like a little bit of... Um, it's totally reasonable against uh, the blue decks of the format, so it's kind of nice. It also hates on Breach a little bit, which is which is also a good thing, because Breach is kind of on the rise. Uh, the biggest problem with this card is it's very clunky and hard to cast. This deck doesn't do a terrible job of casting it, but obviously you can't cast it off of off-color off Moxin or Island, so there are there are definitely downsides. Uh, I found myself wanting to be able to kill random creatures, so I have an Infernal Grasp as a catch-all answer. I had thought about Fatal Push, but there are times where you like need to kill a Murktide or a Lelia or a Hogak or something, and, and Infernal Grasp is the cleanest answer in the colors to it. Um, I was a little bit worried about how much life we're starting to lose. So I also have put a cling to dust, which is actually, it's a fairly underpowered card, but it's a, it's a viable card. It has some, you know, some gameplay against, you know, death, right, shaman or graveyard based decks. We can be gaining life. We can be drawing cards. It pitches to shredder, which is pretty nice because it's a, uh, an escaping card. Um, so I, I think this is a card that has seen some play in these style of, uh, you know, memory style uh, decks in the past, so I think it's worth uh, giving a shot to try to maybe give us ability to have some some gain life, some extra graveyard hate, uh, that kind of thing. Still playing Dress Down as a way to beat Saga Tokens, um, and yeah, we, we probably are a little overwhelmed on two drops, but I personally don't mind. I think the full Mox and Sweet plus Petal means you can get away with stuff like this, and then when you don't really need extra two drops, you can just pitch cards to Ledger Shredder, and it, it feels like a pretty reasonable amount of uh, card selection. Um, people in the comments of the challenge video were saying that it was a greedy deck in terms of Dark Confidant because we are playing two 8-drops. Uh, while an 8 damage is definitely a big amount of damage, uh, it's more prudent to look at average damage, average CMC. Uh, and for our Dark Confidant, our average CMC is actually below 2, which, is, I think, which I think is quite good. When I did some Googling on what people felt were acceptable Dark Confidant, average CMC ranges. A lot of deck people said between two and three. Um, so, I mean, I didn't even think it was greedy at all until someone said, hey, that, that's a really greedy Dark Confidant deck, but uh, I, I, I'm not seeing it. Also, life, you know, you can get a lot of life loss uh, mitigated by having a Luris. That definitely helps. Not as much as it did pre, uh, you know, pre Luris nerf, but between Luris and Cling to Dusk and, and a very low average CMC, I'm pretty happy with the way these Dark Confidants are currently stated. Um, or statted, or situated, or oh, something like that. Uh, any other changes? I still have a lot of my things. Uh, I'm trying to play two Deadweights instead of a Deadweight and a Myers Grasp. I have had both instances where Myers Grasp killed something Deadweight hasn't, and... Myers Grass was uncastable where a Deadweight would have been castable. So currently I, I am taking Senpai's suggestion and trying two Deadweights. However, I, I'm not convinced it could be two Deadweights. It could be one Deadweight, one Myers Grasp, which could be two Myers Grasps. We do have a lot of two drops. So having some one drops might make some sense. I didn't have that many two drops until uh, I added Dothy Voidwalker, Dothy Voidwalker, and Infernal Grasp to my deck. Uh, the EE has been quite, quite, quite good. Uh, Caracas has been fairly reasonable util utility, uh, mostly for, I put this mostly in for the Hogak matchup, but there have been some other matchups where I brought it in. Uh, and then we have a pile of Graveyard Hate, Tabernacle Needle, Soul Guide Lantern, Double Jailer, Tabernacle, Tormod's Crypt. 
Um, these are uh, cards that are good with Luris and good against uh, the graveyard decks. It has been brought to, you know, chat brought up that maybe we just want to play four ley lines in our sideboard and just lose our Luris. That could be true. Um, I do like Luris in the in the matchups where Deadweight is good, so that would be a Gak. Um, so, like, you lose a little bit on the Gak matchup, but you probably gain a little bit on the Squee and Dredge matchups. Eh, something, you know, here and there. Personally, I, I wasn't feeling changing to ley lines. We're going to try another league with this six pieces so it's not really six pieces, it's actually eight pieces, because we do have these Voidwalkers. Um, while Voidwalker is hard to cast, and probably doesn't come down in time in a lot of games with Stredge, if you do bring, if, you're, if you are on the play, or you do have fast mana, um, playing against this against a Bizarre deck can be very, very, very powerful. So I'm excited to see how that performs again in this testing league. This deck is fun. I really enjoy playing it. I really enjoy learning how to play it. It's not a deck that I would say I'm particularly proficient on, but I, the learning curve has been... Uh, enjoyable, and I, ha I have really actually like liked the the lessons and um, you know the growth of the list itself. So let's jump into Vintage League and see what we can do. <laughs> Here we go, round one of a Vintage League with Luris Shredder. Uh, we're up against Sajiro, who in the last league I played beat the crap out of me with a Jewel Shops list. I know that they sometimes play Doomsday, sometimes play Pio. Basically, I'm expecting a combo deck. Good news, we have a cat. Bad news, we don't have a moxin. But we have a horse, so I am willing to accept this hand. <laughs> uh, too brutal, too brutal. Oh, I caught the Saga. The Saga has won me zero games and has lost me a game, so I'm just off it. No shot. Probe! Please don't look at my hand. You don't have you don't see me over here looking at your hand. No bueno. Yeah, Saga also doesn't cast vintage all-star Dothy Voidwalker, so. Alright, so this time we have fetch land, so we're either looking at Doomsday Tinker or Doomsday or Tinker. This looks like a Tinker. Not gonna force a Soul Ring. Uh unfortunately, I will be in a tough spot on this turn two. Because I don't have a Moxon, so I can't play a 2-drop and hold up Flusterstorm. So I have to either choose to play a 2-drop and play only a Force that they know about. Or hold up Fluster but not advance my board. Which I hate. I don't like that. This deck is definitely a lot worse when you don't draw a Moxon. I will put it that way. But I would also say that most decks are a lot worse when you don't draw a mox in it. This one particularly takes it to a different level with a number of two drops. Like, if I'm able to play Dark Confident R Shutter on turn one, I feel like a lot more confident about this game. It's not the case here. So I have to take a calculated risk. Does my opponent have Tinker plus Force backup? Tinker plus Flusterstorm backup? I, if I had another land in, play, uh, in my hand, I would definitely wait. Well, yeah, I mean, it, I, I mean, it, it, I have to invest mana to get cards back. I think I can just cycle a dress down, though. So I think I can wait one turn here. Uh, I think I'm just going to fetch now so that my opponent can't opposition agent me. I don't think my opponent's Soul Ring Underground Sea deck is going to wasteland me. Unfortunately, my opponent knows about both Force of Will and Flusterstorm, so... Uh, Probe takes out a lot of the... Uh, fun, skill, everything in magic, so. Uh-oh. That's a Karn. I don't think I care about a Karn, to be honest. So, I'm going to assume my opponent is on maybe my Tinker Doomsday list. Or maybe a DPS list or something similar. My deck doesn't, my deck doesn't want to be Karned. Uh, I probably am still supposed... Let me, let me just cycle and force this. If my opponent forces back, I think that's okay with me. Uh, okay, now I'm done. I'm going to force this, because this is going to let me play Bob plus Flusterstorm. Or I can play Shredder plus Mox, and, you know, give me a couple of choices. I guess if they force back, then I can't do any of those things, but... Yo, what's up, Andy? Hope you're doing well. Uh, ooh, Gush is interesting, because we actually... Hmm... 
So now I could do something like float my mana, cast uh, Ledger Shredder, cast Gush, replay my land. It's kind of an interesting thought. Or I could play Dark Confidant, hold up Flusterstorm. I'm definitely very weak here with just a Flusterstorm against a pile of mana because I forced this Karn. I would like to find another force. I think I like the idea of... I guess there's no reason not to just float each color in case something happens. I think I like the idea. Oh, no, I want to. Sorry. Sequencing, sequencing, sequencing. I think I'm going to play Ledger Shredder and then I'm going to gush. I think I am just going to. Huh. What am I going to do? Obviously, I'm going to hold up Underground Sea Flusterstorm. But if I keep both of my mana sources, well, then I don't have a follow-up play. But if I lose a mana source, I guess if it, I think maybe the play that makes the most sense is to lose a land. By losing a land, I don't get a counter, but I can still draw a land and go Dark Confidant plus uh, Hold Up Fluster. I could also go... Because I could also go Ruby Time Walk to loot as well. I don't know how much another loot is going to matter, though. We also have another draw two off of this gush, so it's like very likely I'll draw another land. I'm gonna, I'm gonna loot a land away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna replay my underground sea, hold open my fluster storm, and pass. And then I will probably brainstorm at the end step just to use my mana. I might die here, to be to be fair, right? My opponent could go land tinker, and I don't have... Oh, no. That can't be good for me. <laughs> ah, shit. All right, so let's start by conniving, and then... Um, trying to find four... Well, let's see. I can Buster Storm and make them use their LED, and they have a land drop to give and a Tinker in play. I'm going to probably pitch Dark Confidant. Maybe I just pitch Dig. I mean... Hmm... Making them, I just don't know, like, if they have a Doomsday on top of their library, they will just win. So I don't know if Flusterstorm is even any good. Or like even, even, like, hitting their whole hand away is even any good. If it's, like, the list I'm thinking of, or, like, a similar, like, list, it probably doesn't have a very high chance of bricking unless they hit a Force. Maybe I just pitch this Dig, because there's a chance I go, like, Bob plus... Mox Mox Time Walk and try to win. I have a Brainstorm here for uh, three forces and a negation. Three in, in 44 is probably not good. But... <sighs> they know about my Fluster. They're obviously prepared here to do that. I don't know. I'm gonna try for a. I'm gonna try for a force. I I don't think it's worth it. Like, I don't know how much the cards in their hand matter. Wow, those cards are bad. <laughs> those cards are very bad. All right, so I will. I don't know. Take the demonic tutor. Okay. Yep. You got a tinker. That was definitely the risk that I took forcing the Karn, and I considered not forcing the Karn. Yeah, that's a really good card to have on top. <laughs> I assume we're just dead to that, right? Uh, they can get, like, Yogwell, put their hand in their graveyard, and then Soul Ring, Tinker for a top. Dark Petition for, or, or just Dark Petition for something. I can't, I can't imagine we're, wait, what are they doing? 
What? 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 What happened? Why did my opponent pass the turn after dark petitioning? I don't understand. Why would you do that? What, what what could you possibly have tutored for that you wouldn't be able to continue playing? All right, well, I'm, I'm going to go Demonic for Lotus and then go Bob Time Walk. No, this is a different player. Oh. You know, Ledger Shredder, this is a Magic the Gathering card, if I've ever seen one. Uh, okay, I will not Demonic for Lotus. I will, in fact, draw my Lotus. All right, so... What makes the most sense here? Obviously, I'm going to go Dark Confidant, Time Walk. Should I just grab a Force? Maybe. Feels like a force makes the most sense to me. Sure. No, I want to play Dark Confidant Time Walk, right? I'm going to go Dark Confidant and I'm going to Time Walk. That's going to give me three damage and then another six, five or six damage. I kind of wish I had a Snapcaster sometimes. Like, the be not being able to Snap Walk has been very sad. Because I'm actually... Yeah, I really wish I... Like, I cut the Yogwill from the deck. Can we not go over here? Can we go over here? Thank you. Uh, I have Misstep Fluster Force. Another Bob was not ideal, but... Well, they can't really use their Citadel anymore. I I don't know. I liked the Yogwill. Uh, Senpai thought it was clunky and bad. I'm not sure. I mean, I have Leith on the table here, so now they have to kill me. It's going to be fairly difficult for them to do that, I would think. But we'll have to see. I don't think there's any reason to play the Bob. Because I can just pitch it and get a blue card. I did not actually find a blue card. Um, is there any reason to actually counter this Dark Ritual? I don't think so. Yeah, you only really want Yagwil at the very end after everything's been countered. And I guess my opponent can just get a Tendrils. Okay, that's certainly good here. There's no real point in Flusterstorming this, right? I don't believe there's any real point in Flusterstorming this. So they're back to 11. And I guess there was a point to play this Yagwell, or this Dark Confidant, but now I can die to my Dark Confidant. I could very easily die to my Dark Confidant here. I can't escape this, right? I cannot escape this. All right, I mean, this is the time where we hit our uh, our 8 drops, right? We have a Treasure Cruise to hit. We could also hit Force of Will. Hit a Ledger Shredder. Okay. Um, I'm going to just attack and hold up all my mana again. I, I do believe we were supposed to have died when this Dark Petition was cast, but I'm not really sure what happened. Uh, uh, sure. I, I think I have to just counter this. On my next upkeep, I could maybe cling and eat my Dark Confidant. And get, oh, they have their own misstep? Or they have? They have a hard cast force. 
Um, so now they would have to fetch and go to one and if I, I should just fluster this, I think. So many loots. So they can pay for this, but then they're going to go to one. I don't know what they can put on top of their library. That would matter. Maybe I'm not even supposed to fluster this. Maybe I'm just supposed to let it happen. Hmm. I mean, their only good card now is Yogwill, right? And we have a force. Wow, uh, that was kind of a crazy game. I don't know exactly what happened. I think I probably could have played this tighter though. I'm not convinced the way I played this game was very good. I, I I actually think the forcing of the Karn might have just been really bad. But the problem is, like, if I don't force the Karn, maybe force... Uh, uh, so, for me, I can uh, crack and go to two and cling and go to uh, back up to five. So, I would still die to... Two forces and one treasure cruise, so a three and 31. It's not unreasonable. It's definitely something that could happen. I was definitely going to cling on my upkeep, though. Uh, okay, so my opponent is playing... It's a Dark Petition Storm deck that maybe could still have Doomsday in it. We haven't decided if that's the case or not. I know that Andy said they were playing some Doomsday Tendrils. So it's possible they're playing my my, my Tendrils Doomsday list. Uh, in this case, you're already pre, pretty pre-boarded for this kind of, you know, Flusterstorm matchup. But I'm going to bring in uh, Counterbalance and... Yeah, I'm going to bring in Counterbalance. Yeah, maybe it's fine. Maybe it's fine. Um, Maybe it's okay. Land under each card on Citadel in a 12 dent deck makes me sad. Was going for the high roll on the deep dark prediction was just a mistake. I think they went for tendrils. Yeah, so they 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 they, they wanted, I think they went for tendrils in hopes that they would just kill them, kill me on the spot. Uh and then they just like hit land land, which I guess is something that could happen. Uh all right, I guess I could play explosives. I don't really want to play explosives. I don't think that's very good. I don't really know if I... Like, maybe a Soul Guide Lantern is fine. Um, what would I take out for a Soul Guide Lantern? I could take out... Dress Down? Don't need Dress Down. Yeah, I don't need the two creature removal spells. I can play two other things. Maybe I should have the fourth Fluster Storm in the board. It's possible. They only needed two more storm to go for the tendrils kill. Interesting. Um, I think I would always just go for Yogwill, but what do I know? Posture. My posture bad. Oh. All right, I have a cat. All right, that's an interesting hand. It's a very interesting hand. Out of water. I'll get it after this round, though. Uh, defense grid. Huh. Kind of an annoying one. I don't know if I can trust... I mean... It makes sense just to for They had force, right? In game one. So you have to force and defense grid. Mm. Probably still supposed to force it. Oh, they're going to force back? That's fine. Oh, there's PO in this list. Interesting. 
Uh, so I am just going to, I think what I'm going to do here is play my counterbalance off of Petal Sapphire so I can hold open a fetch to like change my counterbalance. Obviously, I only have one top in my deck. Um, but Oh, I guess the problem with this is I don't have a black source, so I have to fetch anyways. Oh, now I have a merchant scroll. Okay. Do I, would I rather merchant for ancestral or play Bob? I guess I would rather just merchant for ancestral. No use in merging for counter magic because my opponent has a defense grid currently. I guess they can technically counter this if they want to. Probe. What do you have in your hand? Karn Bolas is Citadel. Fair enough. So a land, they get to Karn me. What would they draw? They drew an Ancestral. All right. Counterbalance. I have some one drops in my deck. Not that many, though. Time Walk was revealed. Okay. Well, Time Walk is not bad. Dark Confidant, Time Walk next turn. Can't reset my Counterbalance in any way here. My opponent did hit land soul ring which actually lets them play karn which is really bad for me because <laughs> now i can't play dark confidant plus time walk and they actually have triple underground c so i can't actually counter <laughs> they're gonna have a bolus of citadel hard cast here wow uh we just uh are in a deep hole now i guess interesting interesting Huh. Well, that top deck Ancestral was really bad for me. As most top decks Ancestral are. I don't think it makes sense to play a time walk now. I think it's better to just play this Bob and be able to time walk next turn. And I have at least two looks at counterbalance. Don't have any sixes in my deck though. So there will be no bullets that it'll be encountered. I don't think there's too much point of playing Time Walk because I can't even draw Force because I don't have a blue card. Um, like, I can't draw a top. I'm going to see what's on top with my Counterbalance. Currently, there's a top on top, which is turned off by Dar uh, the Karn. Um, I would... Would I like to leave a 1 on top? Or would I want to try to find a 0? I probably want to try to find a 0, right? It's more likely for them to play Moxin than Dark Rituals. All right, Delta on top, countered the Mox Opal. Oh, they stood up the Citadel to block the Karn. Jesus. Okay, yeah. I, <laughs> I boarded out my creature removal. No, not my creature removed. Did I board in Steel Sabotage? I didn't board in Steel Sabotage, huh? Yeah, I probably could have used a Steel Sabotage here. Hmm. To be fair, I didn't think we would be getting to this point in this game. I didn't think this was happening, but... Like, when I probed my opponent's hand and my their hand was Karn Citadel 3 mana, I was like, oh, alright, we're in a good spot, but... Ancestral sure changes everything in a hurry. All right. Well, I drew four cards and none of them were particularly good. <laughs> that happens a lot with this deck. There are just a lot of cards that are not particularly good. Um, hmm. All right. Well, uh, I'm not going to put Luris in my hand because I want to be able to fetch away again. Best thing on top is a zero. It was a negation. Hmm. If they play like a powerful one drop, I'll probably refetch, but uh, I will probably refetch for that. Hmm. 
Yeah. No, it's a force of will. All right. Well, that's really bad. <laughs> I think we're going to die. Hmm. They're a lot heavier into the artifacts than I thought they were. They've got Paradoxal Outcome and Opal. Are we sure they even have Doomsday in their deck chat? Or did someone, did we just make that up? I mean, they could have changed decks, so. Uh, time Twister. I could have stopped that if I had my negation still. All right, well, I'm, I'm, I guess I am down to Time Twister. Can draw into a force. Uh, I guess not. I was going to say a force or a new card off of Counterbalance. New card off of Counterbalance is a zero. It's a Mishra's Bobble. Uh, yeah. But I, I still don't have very much, much counterplay here because I didn't actually draw Force of Will. Hmm. All right, well, now I can have six. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you got me. That is a lot of Dark Ritual. All right, I've been bested. Um, hmm. Kind of want to bring in Steel Sabotage. It's not great, but it doesn't seem terrible. Probably better than another land. All right, well, we got got pretty badly there. Ancestral Recall giving us the big old middle finger. I have a camp. I've got turn one Bob, turn two time walk, and five mana, five lands. How much do we le believe in Bob? That is. All right, I'm down. Let's go. I believe in Bob. Oh, they kept a seven card hand. That's probably not good for me. My hand's pretty good against uh, da, uh, defense grid, right? <laughs> uh, shit. Well, I get to draw. Well, I get. I guess I technically don't get to draw anything unless I get to take a turn. But if I get to take a turn, then I get to draw two and then the four. So, I mean, I feel like it's worthwhile. It is a little sticey, but I knew my Bob was very likely to resolve, both resolve and not be killed, so I think it makes some amount of sense. Uh-oh. Are they just playing Tinker on turn one? All right, well, I guess I made the wrong choice. <sighs> Yeah, my opponent's just gonna PO for four. Oh, they're just going to kill me? What's gonna happen here? Is this a... yeah, I look like I'm dead. <laughs> this is the kind of hand where you're like, damn, I guess I should have mulliganed a force of will. Wow, I just have they just have a turn one restricted card uh DPS kill, huh? Wow. Just exactly 20 storm. <laughs> All right, I guess I got got. I could have Mind Break Trap or Force, but I don't have anything. Man, I don't know. Every time we play against DPS in League's chat, looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, somehow, I know that you're supposed to be 50% to have a Force in your opening hand, but somehow it doesn't feel like that for me. All right, well, what was I going to draw? Soul Guide Lantern, Ruby, and then Land Land. All right, well, certainly not what we wanted to happen there. 
All right, round one did not go well. I think we lost 3-0, basically. Let's try again. Uh, I have a cat. What are you up to, Juan? Juan, what do you, Juan, what do you have? You, you playing playing Golos? Playing Oath? Playing uh, KCI? What's going on? No Gigantha revealed. Probably could have mulliganed last round, but let's go to basic island here. Uh, yeah, I mean, these magic cards are fine. I accept, I think. Draw Bob Emerald, and then maybe we play Bob and um, draw, into, draw into C. Oh, wait, no, because we're going to fetch away... Hmm. Maybe I didn't want to do that. Urza's Saga, huh? Urza's Saga Go. Interesting. So I could go Shredder, Emerald, and Loot. And if I wanted to get this, I guess it wouldn't give me the land. Hmm. I think I just like playing Bob. Yo, GG's. Uh, okay, so they are still on uh, Golos stuff, or, or you know, an artifact deck, probably. I have only one dress down as answer to constructs in the main, which is a little annoying, but... Ooh, that was a nice pair of draws. I can go... Um, I'm gonna, uh, I can go, yeah, I can go Shredder, Emerald, Time Walk. Uh, do I want to shred a land or? Yeah, I mean, shredding a land makes sense to me. I don't think we want to offer up our Bob for Saga trade. I will have definitely have an overwhelming advantage of cards. Maybe it's actually fine. Nah, maybe on this next attack. I want to at least get my one card off of Bob. All right. Take two, play a Ledger, get a Ledger Shredder. All right. Um, we have a lot of choices. We have ancient. We have merchant scroll for ancestral. I mean, we probably start by playing a ledger shredder, and then I don't think we're super worried about a saga anymore. I think it's just better if we just go for the ancestral recall. I guess I don't want to play this flooded strand first. Hmm. Maybe I actually wanted to just gush. I don't really want to lose my mana. I feel like having a lot of mana in play is actually fine here. But I don't have a really strong set of connives now. I guess what I can do is I could still gush in response. So I can just loot away lands and have a million... Million cards? Hmm... don't really like what I did, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to gush now. All right, it's time to loot. It's time, I time to loot. Okay, now I get to ancestral. The only card I really were looking for now is um the dress down, probably. Hey, look, I found the dress down. Uh, in that case, I don't think I'm going to trade my dark confidant. Actually. 
No, in that case, I don't think I need to trade my Dark Confidant because I have the answer. If they if they go for Tomb, if activate, Tomb activate, I think it's really good for me. So, <sighs> so next turn we can uh, brainstorm and, and, and stack our Bob trigger. We certainly high rolled here. Yeah, this is definitely one of the stronger sets of draws you can have. I'm just going to get rid of... I think I just want to have all my blue cards. I love Ledger Shredder, though. This card is just a ton of fun. I kind of doubt that they're actually going to make another Construct token here. Are they? Really? Oh, okay. So my opponent has invested a land and six mana into two Constructs that are going to go away when we draw a card. Uh, and then they do get a, a mana back with the Saga, but we have about infinite counter magic now, so. These Shredders should just clock my opponent as well. A Nettle so I'm just going to force it. I guess they do get to get an attack in here. I actually think I'm just going to jump with this Bob instead. Um, my life total... If I go to 8 and I can I could die off this Bob... I guess I'm brainstorming, so I'm never dying off this Bob. I kind of want to just get rid of this Bob, to be honest. Don't think it's necessary. I feel like we should be able to win from here. Maybe that's wrong. I kind of wish I had kept the fetch land and not the underground sea, so I could actually have... All right, I'm going to just go Shredder Dress Down. Yeah, I could definitely th see maybe a, a therapy happening. So I can actually uh, get all my counters before uh, the Dress Down resolves, and the Dress Down resolves, and I attack. Um, they obviously can start making tokens again, but I don't really care. Uh, ooh, Black Lotus. Do we want to keep a Black Lotus and get our Luris? Kind of do, huh? <laughs> Man. I'm just having a great time, aren't I? I have been looking for like reasonable way to kill Bob, so maybe maybe Cabal Therapy is a thing we could do. This deck is quite hard to build and to play, at least for me. I have definitely I definitely have to think a lot when I'm playing this deck. Wasteland, it stops me from playing Luris. And they have another so double saga activation. Well, my opponent is not currently dead next turn. Uh, hmm, I don't really think this is the... I, I don't know what the Deadly Dispute deck is, but I don't think it's this one. I just have too many, too many, too many cards at the moment. Could play Deadly Dispute, though, as a way to sack Bob as well. It's totally reasonable. I'd probably have to, like, cut the Void Walkers or something. I, I can't play more two mana cards. I, I have so many. Um... Is there any value in forcing this? I mean, if you ever play Bob, there will come points where Bob can kill you. Like, you know, there are points where you want to sacrifice Bob. In Vintage, you gain so many cards that at some point, cards are not the thing that is going to cause you to lose the game. Uh, I mean, they would, they would, they would name Emerald, and it's further keeping us from Luris. But they also, it gives them an extra uh, creature for a swing back that could be lethal. Hmm. Probably is not going to be lethal though. I, I don't have lethal here. I have to attack twice. So like, my opponent is going to, like, if I don't trigger these shredders, then my opponent can activate this saga. I guess it's highly likely I trigger these shredders because I have a brainstorm. 
All right, I think I'm going to brainstorm and fluster my brainstorm and my fluster storm just to trigger my shredders, and then I hopefully will have still have force backup. So I'm going to cast brainstorm and hold priority, and then I'm going to cast fluster storm targeting brainstorm, and then I'm going to have my second part of my fluster storm target um, the other fluster storm. Actually, I actually uh, didn't draw a blue card. Well, I guess I still have Brainstorm. Okay, my opponent is off it because they can no longer make a Saga token here. I think just forcing them not to be able to make a Saga token is probably good enough to win. I think this could have definitely have been optimized, but we did draw 35 cards in that game. So... Bird's the word. All right, so we're playing against aggro shops, it looks like. I don't have that much cards for aggro shops. Uh, I have these dead weights that could look pretty silly. I have a single steel sabotage. I have already cut, like, the Hercules Recall and the Infernal Reckoning. Uh, but we have steel sabotage, seal of removal. Maybe we want needle, and do we want Krakus as an additional land? It's quite possible. Yeah, this is a very, like, Matt Murray style list. It's, there, it's, a, lot of, it's a lot going on. I have had some problems with running out of fetchables, but I don't really think more than six lands to fetch for is correct. So, well, yeah, everything is definitely inefficient in comparison to Doomsday. Every time I cast a card, I go, well, Doomsday could just kill my opponent here. <laughs> uh, well, we don't want Misstep, Flusterstorm, Probe. Uh, my Breakdrop and Negation are still pretty reasonable, especially on the draw. Um... Um, kind of think, I don't know what else I want to do. Don't know what else. I guess, like, uh, Kling is, like, kind of bad, but also could be pretty nice. It's just a closer. Nah, it's probably bad. Well, these Voidwalkers are also not very good in this matchup, so maybe I'll just take the Voidwalkers out. They can't block, which is very bad here, I would think. Let's try this. All right, let's try again. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a really strong hand. I have a bunch of mocks, and obviously I don't have a. Uh, this is a strong, strong hand. I don't have a basic, um, but I have you know, so much mocks, and so I can just force their best play on turn one, untap and ancestral recall. It's very good. Voidwalker is not called Voidwalker. Yeah, it's called Voidwalker. Voidwalker doesn't block because it has shadow. So soul ring. All right. Well, that's scary. You have like a lodestone golem. A Mystic Forge. I also think that's probably worth countering. All right. Well, time to figure out what we draw into here. Um, we also might want... I guess we can't play around... My, we could play around Mind Break Trap. I kind of don't want to play around Mind Break Trap. I could also have gotten Steel Sabotage. That would have been interesting. Well, I have creature answers. I have a spout foundry inspector. It's pretty good. Solid turn. I'm not convinced we're oh that's that's a nice one too. If we get wastelanded here. Oh saga. Yeah. I, I am like a little light on saga. Hey, I only have um dressed down and engineered explosive. It's been pretty close. Ooh. Well, I can bounce the germ. This is kind of fun. I need to get some mana and get a Luris in play. How about a Black Lotus? Dark Confidant. All right. So I'm thinking we get a Bob going and we get uh, a dead weight on the inspector and maybe even seal the nature, uh, the germ so we don't take any damage. Let's get a bob going. Let's get a seal going. And let's deadweight the inspector. Loses some mana here to do this. But I also run out of black mana. I guess I have a bob. I should be able to draw black mana. 
probably fine. I mean, this is this hand is a uh, is killing for a lotus to get a Luris going. City of Traders, huh? Oh, relic, yeah, yeah, yeah. Relic's quite good here. Relic is quite good here. Man, yeah, relic is sick here. I'm not convinced we have enough stuff to actually beat. Oh, they have a walking ballista. That's very bad. I'm, I'm like not convinced we actually have enough cards to be good in the shops matchup, unfortunately. Like, I, I did kind of make my deck very weak against shops. I just chose to put all the kind of uh, graveyard cards in my sideboard, really. Uh, there, I feel like there's not enough shops to warrant it, but that being said, last weekend there was quite a few shops players. Oh, a Stone Coil Serpent. Okay, cool. So that's not a Ballista. So that, the worst has been avoided. They're actually not going to be able to make a uh, Construct this turn. I do think I'm going to cash in my Seal, though. I just need to preserve my life total. Uh, they do have an Active Relic. Um, and I do have an answer for Stone Coil. But they will get like a Saga something. Okay, so they're going to draw a card and exile. Yeah. I mean, this is a really good relic. Um, I, I do think we're behind here, even though we have a bunch of cards active. A needle might be good. Oh no, cruise! Oh no, cruise! Why are you like this? All right, well, I'm going to needle Urza Saga. Um, that way I don't get a, have to deal with a token as well. And then I will probably hold on to my grass for when they equip it. Uh, and then I, I want to play a Bob, but I, I don't think I can take the 10 damage or whatever that this, stole, this Stone Coil Serpent is going to do to me. I feel like I'm pretty lucky I haven't been wastelanded in this game. I think the line we took was fine, but it, I do think that Shop is probably an uphill battle just because of how little I respected it in building the sideboard. Uh, and it wasn't because I don't respect shops the deck. It's because I don't respect shops the metagame percentage. At least in at least in leagues, anyways. At least Cruz wasn't hit by Bob. That is true. That is very true. All right. Yeah, Inspector, and then Equip, I assume. I guess another Relic is a nice series of new Crucible of Worlds in the aggro shops deck. Okay. Get to rebuy their uh, Saga. Uh, good, good thing I had needled Saga or we would be very dead this game. All right. Uh, destroy target creature. Okay, cool. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. So my opponent can cycle Relic still by... They'll probably want to play their Saga first and then cycle Relic. Yeah, they should probably cycle Relic with the City of Traders trigger on the stack. I would, I would think that'd be a pretty good play. They didn't choose to do that. They had a floating mana to do so. Kind of interesting. I, I'm still really far behind. I just don't have enough answers, probably. I had an Infernal Reckoning in my sideboard, which would have, like, exiled this and gained me 13 life. Um, would have been pretty sick. But I just didn't feel like I needed it. Or not that I needed it, but I just didn't feel like there were enough shops to warrant it. But it's definitely a cool tech, too. Uh, Alright, so I have to beat a Nettle Cyst, an, an Inspector, and my opponent is still, like, drawing a bunch of cards off of these Relic of Progenitus. All I have is a Measly Bob. Negation is a little late and deals me three damage. Uh, so this Bob is going to get chumped to the Nettle Cyst. I'm going to get a Luris, I guess. Uh, this just does not look like a winning plan, though. Just does not seem like a winning line. But, unfortunately, the opponent's relics have been quite good. Just the incidental uh, graveyard heat. Wow. Wow. Uh, they have drawn creature every turn. That hasn't been good for me either. 
I actually think my, I guess I haven't drawn. I was going to say, I thought my opponent drawn maybe more cards than me. <laughs> like, that's not true. Yeah, even though I, like, if there wasn't a Relic, we could chump block with Dark Confidant every turn, and so we wouldn't actually be in too bad of a situation, but because of the Relic, we actually just lose our real good engine here. Yeah. Hmm. I don't really see our way out. The Relic was great. Yeah, Hydro Blast is really good in the current metagame. There's a lot of Breach running around. I've been very happy with the Hydro Blast. Maybe I can convince them to hit my Bobble with this Relic, and that way I can play a Bob. Okay, sick. All right, so I have a new plan. The problem is I... They're drawing another creature? The problem is I have to chump with this Lurus, don't I? Yeah, that's the real problem here, is I actually can't set up the engine because I have to chump with Lurus. I, yeah, I, yeah, it's all just a little bit short. I probably needed my opponent to flood out a little harder to win this game. All right, I'm off it. This is uh, not winnable from here. Um, yeah, just kind of a byproduct of not really playing enough cards that are good in the matchup. Like, we have some cards that are good, but nothing that is, like... You know, Energy Flux, Hercules Recall. I really want a way to flashback spells, too. Maybe I play a Snapcat. I get another two drop. Uh, maybe I put the Yogwill back in. I don't know. I don't know. It's a lot of th there's a lot of things I want to do, but not a lot of room to do it. Unless I start cutting Dark Confidants and Ledger, Sh Ledger Shredders, which I'm not sure I want to do. Maybe I could, like, cut a Delve spell. Yeah, yeah, Ledger Shredder usually gets quite large in Vintage. It's like a 5-power creature a lot of the times when I'm winning games. Almost everyone is casting two spells every turn, and sometimes there are turns where both players are casting two spells. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, Jace is just not a very great card. Uh, this hand's sick. I'm down. This hand is a little mana light, but... I do think that this one is worth time walking on turn one uh, to try to hit a land drop so that I can hold up Steel Sabotage. Uh, it also lets me, like, play a Shredder as well. It's an interesting hand for sure right here. Definitely an interesting one. Hmm. Well, I want to go turn one Bob. Uh, like, there's no uh, guarantee that I'm allowed to cast Time Walk on turn two. Like, my opponent can go Spheres and stuff. Um. So, like, what I'd like to do is to go Time Walk into a land and play Shredder with a Sabotage back up. I definitely think it's worth time walking here on turn one to try to hit a land drop. Or even a bobble lets me go Shredder Bobble. Yeah, I don't know what that card does. Oh, I hit a bobble, sick. So now I can go like Shredder, Bobble, Trigger Shredder, hit a land drop, pitch the the, the dead weight, uh, bobble myself. I have a ponder on top. Do I want a ponder? Wow, that was like a really nice sequence. Uh, do I want a ponder? I don't think I want a ponder. I don't think I want a ponder. I think I just want a random card. I'm like probably going to lose my fetch land because I have to play Steel Sabotage anyway. So I don't have like ponder plus... Um, I don't have ponder plus fetch land. But I would have ponder plus Dark Confidant, which would trigger Shredder. So maybe it's good enough. Definitely feel rewarded though. So this is pretty good turn one. So now I have a 2-4 flyer that's going to continue to grow. I have a, a counter spell for their very first play. 
Do I want to counter a soul ring? No, I don't really want to counter a soul ring. I would rather counter your four drop. Please play four drop. <laughs> okay, so they're playing a four drop. So it's going to trigger my shredder. Uh, do I want a land? I mean, I do want a land, but I, I can't afford to keep a... I guess I could pitch a bob and I could just go demonic ancestral. And I could go pitch a bob and go demonic shredder. I could I maybe pitching a bob is the play here. I also want the counter. It's not just that I don't want the land, right? I also want the counter. That's okay. I found a bob anyways. Can I go demonic Luris? No. I wish I had more steel sabotages, huh? So what is the best thing I can do here? I can't get a time walk. It's probably just demonic for ancestral and hope to draw a force. I did not draw a force. In fact, I drew many lands. All right, well, that didn't really go well. Um, hmm. I'm a little bit worried now. Drawing three cards sounds good, but what if the cards you draw are bad? Like if my opponent plays another uh, serpent here, oh my God. Uh, all right, yeah, it's uh, not good for the home team. My only real out to that is recurring seals. And I just keep drawing lands. Okay. Definitely want to play Shredder Bob here. Oh my god, really? Uh, okay. Engineered explosives. Well, that's certainly better than a land. Oh, shit. I kind of just needed a force, right? What couldn't I have done differently? I really wish I had Infernal Reckoning still as well. Mm. Well, the shit. Uh the turn two worm coil engine does look challenging. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I take ten. Throw my whole board in front of it. Yeah. I don't think so. Uh, Alright. Well, now I can die to my Dark Confidant, so that's fun. Dress down. Well, that's good against the Saga. I have both of my Saga answers. The problem here is... Alright, well... I'm pretty sure... Man, how do I draw only fetch lands, though? I'm pretty sure we have to play Luris here. I'm going to die to my Bob. I guess I'll go to chump my Bob. Uh, might have to chump the Construct too. So I get to play Luris. Replay Bobble. Connive. Uh, dress down on their end step to turn off Bob is a thing you can do. I have not done that. Uh, so I'm not going to be able, I'm going to have to chump chump. 
I mean, I can jump this forever until they find a relic. Oh, I guess they get a relic off of this this Urza saga. Oh, it's so bad for me. Yeah, they're just going to get a relic off of Saga. Uh, okay. Yeah, this game kind of just came down to not having a force for the worm coil engine. Mm. Yeah, they get a relic. Um. I actually can't even I have to just chump chump. Chalice on two. So stop my dress down. But I have an an E on zero, so that's fine. Oh wow, okay. I'm technically not dying, but I'm definitely not winning. So my opponent wipes my yard with the relic here. Oh, they can't wipe my yard? Oh, that's good for me. So I get to bring back I can actually kill their relic, right? I can go EE -E on zero, EE -E on one, kill the relic. That might be good enough. I have a chump blocker. I can just chump with this bird for a turn. They could have cracked the relic, but then I wouldn't have, uh, they wouldn't have hit the creatures that were in play. So EE -E on zero. EE -E on one. Oh my god, we're doing it. I think we just stabilized. They have to draw another relic. Wow. Uh, I, we're just winning now, unless they draw Relic. Wow. This is an amazing game of Magic. I will bounce your Worm Coil Engine. And now I just get to hit them with Birdman every turn and hopefully win. Uh, 
Oh, can I set up force now? Oh, I ordered this the wrong way. That's so unfortunate. Um, fuck. I'll put I'll put the dress down in the yard. That's probably better. I can always bring the dress down back if I need to. Uh, is there any reason to not just bounce the for the engine now? I don't think so. I could even counter the engine if I wanted to. I don't... Oh, wait. I can merchant scroll for a gush. I guess that doesn't... Mean, that means I have to draw a blue card. Hmm... I don't even want to force the worm coil, right? Because I'm just beating the worm coil. I need to force a relic, though. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna do nothing. <laughs> the engineered explosives was definitely the MVP. They found relic. I'm glad we we waited here. Wow, 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 we will. Oh my god, they actually found relic in time too. Oh no, my bird. Rest in peace, bird. This was wild. Uh, that's interesting. So I can get two seals now. So I could go seal, bounce, attack, and then I can go Caracas, bounce, replay, seal. Oh my lord. That was one of the most amazing games of Magic I think I've ever played. I can't believe that one. Wow. That was awesome. Sweet. All right, round three here. Uh, man, round two was a ton of fun. Let's hope we can do it again in round three. I was just talking with chat about like what is making this deck so much more interesting to me than like previous versions of the deck with like Baleful Tricks or Thing in the Ice. And I, I think the answer is definitely Shredder, just being a huge clock and a powerful draw engine. Feed the Swarm hurts me, though, right? I'm not sure about Feed the Swarm. It's definitely a thing that we could choose to do. We're, we'll put right, right down in our thing. Uh, we'll, just, we'll just put it down here as a, as a card to think about. Yeah, I, I chose to play uh, Infernal Grass, but Feed the Swarm is also a card that technically works, right? Maybe, like, the, the big thing that I thought about for Infernal Grass, Andy, was, like, dealing with things like Murktide Region or Lelia, uh, where you can feed the Swarm a Lelia and be okay, but feeding the Swarm a Murktide can be a little dicey. I don't know what that card is, Passion. All right, so here I'm going to go uh, Sapphire Swamp against an unknown opponent who may have Wastelands, and I'm going to go Sapphire Swamp Dark Confidant, which is... Man, I love when... Our, our deck functions much, much better when we can play a 2-drop on turn 1, so I'm pretty excited for this. Yeah, I, I don't think Feed the Swamp is unreasonable... Or, Feed the Swamp. <laughs> I don't think Feed the Swarm is unreasonable because it hits Saga, which is a totally... I, I, it's a thing our deck is not unhappy doing. Uh, I'm just worried because I don't believe it covers my other cases as well as other cards. Alright, so we're playing against Saga again. This time they are... Uh, unclear. 
well, I have to force this because my opponent has shown me turn one Saga, and I actually have... I'm going to lose if they have a force back up here, but there's just not much I can do about it. Yeah, I've been worried about the health total. Like, our deck is an average CMC of around two, so it's not terrible. Wow, we're really lucky our opponent just didn't have Force of Will there because we would just be dead. I don't think we have Counterplay in the, in the main for that. All right, we do get a draw off of Bob. Bob has been pretty kind to us so far. Uh, haven't been unhappy with Bob, but, like... Even though our deck is, like, theoretic or theoretically, our deck is um, numerically, you know, a pretty good Bob deck, you, we can still, like, hit, dig through time and cruise, right? And, and our life total can become an issue. But this is the kind of game where Feed the Swarm would be great, right? Just feeding the Swarm uh, uh, on the Saga here, and that would solve a lot of our problems. Instead, we're going to have to, like, uh, we're going to have to draw our, our dress down. So... A card costs five mana. Oh, it costs less for each different mana value in your graveyard. Huh. It's a cool card. Yeah, I, I wrote therapy down. That card is actually kind of that card is kind of interesting, chat. Uh look away, YouTube, if you don't want to see a preview card for the next set. Um this is kind of interesting to me because you could play it in like the uh, the containment construct slot of the Riddlesmith deck. Why doesn't it say till end of turn? What what why this feels like it's shortened? Oh, is this a set that's already out? I don't know. Drown in the lock. I don't even remember what Drown in the Lock does. It's like counters and stuff. I'm going to hold up hard cast negation here. Oh, I have to cast it right away. Hmm, interesting. So my opponent plays a land. All right, well, this is pretty unfortunate. I don't really have, like, I, I just have to find my dress down, basically, or have big enough shredders. And I didn't have an early shredder. So this is going, you know, this is not bad. I can play a Luris this turn, but I have nothing to bring back. Maybe that's still fine. Maybe I want to just cast a Ponder with a fetch land. Maybe I I don't I'm trying not to play too many cards that have double pip mana costs. Obviously, like these Voidwalkers are the big anomaly, but I'm trying to play a lot of 1x spells. Uh to go with my off-color Moxin. Uh, I think I'm just going to jam this Luris. And hold up negation for, like, Tinker or something. Uh, no, Nathan, you, you were not. That was a different, uh, that was off stream. Well, there's not zero reasons, Shenmade. Uh, like, you can... Like, the the fact that it pitches to force um, is a very reasonable thing. I, I don't think it's enough. I'm not saying it's enough. I'm just saying it's a thing. I don't know what exactly we're... We're really far behind this game. I don't currently have an engine for this Luris. We have a lot of mana, and we have a Bob, but our opponent is going to have some 4-4 Constructs, which are very big. Yo, what's up, no props? You just missed what I think is one of the, be one of the best games of Magic I've played. Uh, definitely go back and watch round two of this, uh, you know, the last game of round two in this video. My god. It was crazy. What chair am I rocking? I think it's like a DX DX racer. It's fine. I think it's probably wow, they have force of will. Did they just choose not to force of will the time vault? Or maybe they drew force of will for turn. Mm, either way, it's quite bad for us. Hmm. I didn't really think they had force, but. Man. 
Yeah, I don't mind. Like, people don't like the gaming chairs. I don't mind. I don't think they're, like, the greatest thing ever, but they're totally a reasonable chair. I probably will upgrade at some point in my life to a very nice office chair, especially if I continue to work from home, but until then, it works just fine. So, I kind of have to draw that dress down pretty quickly. Black Lotus? Do they also have, like, Breach or something here? What's happening? Yeah, I guess I have to pitch my ponder to the counter of this Ancestral Recall. It's a little greedy for me to wait until the Ancestral Recall, but... Maybe I am actually supposed to hit the Merchant Scroll, because that way they won't be able to, like, go breach Lotus, get Sprain Freeze, but... The problem with that is it opens up to Fluster, which I don't really want to happen, so... The good news is Lotus means these are only three threes and not four fours. I, I have a feeling my opponent might have a breach though and just kill me. Yeah. All right, my opponent chose not to attack, which I can only thank them for because God, that attack is really good. Just limiting my life total. Uh, all right, Bob, I, you got to hook me up with something real good here. Huh? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, this would have been a great cards to have with my Luris. With my Luris resolved. Not bad, though. Not bad, though. I can't complain. The Shredder will immediately be big enough to block these constructs. Well, I guess I shouldn't have said immediately. Could have technically hit a, not, uh, hit a land there. But uh, What is your next card, friend? Oh, a Mox Ruby. Now, my opponent's going to immediately draw a Ruby and they can actually outsize my Ledger Shredder. Not great. All right, hopefully... Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I am I dead currently to Breach at the moment? I'm only dead if they have a Land Breach. Okay. I could have pitched my brainstorm to get these big enough, but I think it's better to have the brainstorm for sure. Uh, also, because it wouldn't be big enough anyway. I, I need to draw my dress down. That's what I need to do. I definitely need to draw my dress down. Mm. Getting to three different costs is very easy. Five was a lot when I played the Tainted Indulgence. All right, if they attack here, I will probably cast Brainstorm just to see if I hit Dress Down, and obviously to filter my Bob. Um. Uh, wow. Let's see. Let's see. All right, well, I hit my dress down. That's the good news here. I actually also hit force blue cards. So I just put the demonic on top. Yeah, I'm going to go to 10. I'm going to go to eight. And then I'm going to demonic for dress down. And I should be winning from there. Um, I could gush. There's another thing we can consider here. Gush makes my Shredder better, and... It makes my Shredder better, basically. I have to hit a blue card, though, if I want to beat, like, a Pyro here. Oh, boy. Um... Because I do think I want to cast the Dress Down on my turn... I think it's too risky. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go Demonic. Oh, I also run into Flusterstorm on my Demonic if I gush first. So this is better. This is better. This is better. The nice part about Dress Down is it doesn't get Flusterstorm. That is the nice part. Okay, so I'm going to get the Dress Down. Uh, and then I'm going to Dress Down now so I can attack... I guess I will also connive.
Uh, yeah, I can just get rid of that card. I want to hold up Force for um, Breach. Interesting. That's the first time we've seen the Void Walker tonight. It doesn't do anything immediately because of Dress Down, but it also will just stop them from breaching. Really, actually, that seems quite good right now. All right, the only thing I'm worried about in this game was losing to my Bob, but apparently my opponent's not worried about me losing to my Bob, which I appreciate. Because <laughs> I was a little worried about losing to my Bob. Uh, we weren't gonna lose to my Bob though, so everything everything was gonna be fine. Oh my! <laughs> what a cool game, man! I don't know this deck, just so sweet, so sweet, really fun to play. All right, so my opponent, is, we don't know if they're on breach technically. We don't know, like we all we know is they're Grixis Tinker. Um, but my opponent getting Black Lotus, I guess maybe they just wanted to go Merchant Scroll Ancestral, so they got Black Lotus. The only thing we know is they're on Tinker. So I'm thinking Hydroblast, Counterbalance, Engineered Explosives is what I normally bring in for this. If they end up being on Breach, we want to bring in Lantern. Um, um, I think I will just take out and... Infernal Grasp, and like a Bobble, and a Fetch Land. I think that makes sense i've been feeling like the deck has a lot of lands in it and i've been boarding some lands out against decks that are not threatening my mana and i was boarding out like the swamp uh but then i i started I, uh, a lot of games i do a lot I, I draw a lot of cards and i end up actually with no fetches like i have, end up with fetches in hand but nothing to fetch so i've been cutting a fetch now i'm not sure if it's good but like, Bobble is the easiest thing to trim and grasp, but not dress down because they're a Saga deck. I think this makes sense. Maybe it's not good to play in Counterbalance against not PO, but I don't know. I'm still testing the Counterbalance. It's possible the Counterbalance is not actually good, and I just need to play real cards. It's hand slaps. Maybe not the Engineer Explosives with this, but it kind of seems very... Uh, okay, basic island jet and soul ring and come on, give me give me like a tinker, tinker, tinker. Oh. The worst part is let's see, eat is not even that good. Hydro. So I'm gonna play. Man, I think I'm going to play at least Sapphire Fetch out so I have the ability to Brainstorm and Hydra Blast. Maybe I'll even play Pearl out so that I can play Shredder next turn first. No, because I want to be able to Brainstorm away Pearl if it's not good. I think I'm just going to play like this. This is a very conservative way to play this, but think it's correct i'm a little worried i wish my opponent had played in a trap but that's what i gotta do what is a guy to do all right so this is a dac fade in all right so i'm gonna brainstorm and then hydro the dac fade in I'm going to get rid of Engineered Explosives and Ruby. Um, Pearl taps for Lurus, so it's better than Ruby. 
And then I can fetch an underground seed because they're not a wasteland deck. And I get to blast this Dak Faden. Now, if they force this, it's definitely a little bit worse for me, but it's not the end of the world. All right, so they didn't force it. It's unfortunate this trap is still a little stranded. I was hoping they would play a, a spell on turn one, but it didn't happen. So we did draw a land here, which is really nice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, Shredder, Pearl, uh, Demonic for a Force. Maybe? Oh, this is a Fatal Push? Ah, uh, Fatal Push. Probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, no shredding. Well, I get to I got to shred. Oh, I hit the force. How does this keep happening? Okay, so here I can pitch the mind break trap and then demonic for ancestral, and then I have ancestral cruise force. Yeah, yeah this is pretty reasonable. Uh, they're gonna force my demonic. I think that's just fine, right? I hate to hold up force if they tap deck tinker, and if they don't, then I just cruise on the next turn. I feel like all of our plays have just had way more value than our opponent's plays. Yo, thanks for the prime. Appreciate that. Chat, did you know that if you have Amazon Prime, you can give Twitch Prime to one streamer a month for free? Just say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't think keeping the Ledger Shredder is worth using a mana. This gets around um, Flusterstorm. They top decked Hull Breacher. Wow. Good, good thing I top decked a blue card or that would have been really bad for me. We call that getting Renade. Actually, that's not what we call getting Renade. <laughs> there are other things we call getting Renade. All right, so I actually do kind of wish we had our ledger shredder now but the good news is we have time walk plus luris in our hand uh we don't have anything to use our luris on yet but okay so it's a it's a top deck war i've actually used my cruise already and i didn't get to get the ancestral so i have a luris and nothing else and uh, that's actually kind of a reasonable right do i have enough black mana to do this I do. All right, cool. I actually have Looping Voidwalker now, which is kind of sick. All right, okay, sure, 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 sure. Now don't top deck Tinker on me. And I think we have a nice spot to be. Uh-oh, Lightning Bolt, Ragavan, that's fine. No, 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 it's, it's not about restricting. Renee, Renee is Renee Randrup, who is the, the Hold Breacher. Four Hold Breacher all the day, every day. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, like, kind of worried about this Ragavan. Like, what if this Ragavan... Like, I'm not like, I have to attack with this Voidwalker, right? Start clocking my opponent, because my Voidwalker can't block. Like, I can't die to, like, life damage on the Ragavan, but I could die if it hits, like, a bird or something. I don't know. No, in general, I'm not worried about Ragavan. I think Ragavan's quite bad in Vintage. In this current board state, however... Oh, they're just going to hold back Luris? Okay, then I can't lose. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, if they're going to hold back, then I'm down. Uh, Merchant Scroll. I don't think Ragavan's very good, to be honest. I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't even supposed to be banned in, in Legacy. I think people just complained. I, I'm pretty sure Ragavan was a bad ban in Legacy, but... Uh, what do I want to do here? Do I want to get Gush, Dig Through Time, or Ancestral? I am pretty sure Banning Ragavan made Delver decks better. <laughs> uh, 
You know, a card that I sometimes wish we had in this list is Mystic Sanctuary. It's okay. We, we don't. We, we don't want to go into. We, we, we don't talk about legacy chat. No. 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 Stop. 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 No more legacy. No more legacy. We talk only vintage now. <laughs> My mistake. I shouldn't have said anything. I think I'm gonna get the gush. Okay. All right, well, now we can't lose because now the Ragavan can't attack. They can just trade with its Shark Confident every turn. I'm drawing two cards a turn. Well, I guess my opponent can still technically cast Tinker. Why isn't there a Sanctuary? Sanctuary is a kind of an awkward card. What the frig? Uh... And, like, it's a deck that has a bunch of black, like, black, black cards and... Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Sanctuary in 2022 Vintage. It's possible I do want Sanctuary. I thought about sideboarding Sanctuary. For what it's worth. Alright, well, seven fresh ones. I didn't draw any forces. I can cast another Time Twister, though. I think holding the mox in, in a Ledger Shredder deck is correct. I, I understand that it didn't work out there, but... I, I mean, I think it was correct. Alright, a Booble. Alright, so I have so many things to choose from. What do we want to do? I mean, I think we definitely want to just go... Blue, White, Shredder, Bobble... We gotta try to find time walk, maybe. I don't know. My opponent has seven cards in hand, six cards in hand. I have no forces. I don't really think we can dump our hand. Half our hand is lands. So, I right, well, I think I start by playing Shredder, and then we move on from there. Maybe if I drew Black Lotus, I can't really cast this dig. This gush isn't that great. I'm a little worried we were just going to get combo killed on the on the swing back. We might have to just swing all so that we get more damage in. That might not even be good. Oh, I didn't keep in anything that kills Sphinx of the Steel Wind, did I? That was probably a mistake. I probably should have like either a Steel Sabotage or an Infernal Grasp or something in my deck. Yeah, I don't care, sure. <laughs> uh, my opponent Pyroblast that's actually really good for us because now my Dothley Voidwalker is a Pyroblast um, so I'm actually pretty happy about that I think now what I'm going to do is like replay the Shredder from my yard play uh, my Moxin and pass and not attack with my Dothy because I just want to not die and I currently don't really have I, I guess I can attack with this Dark Confidant that seems like a reasonable attack but I think attacking with the Voidwalker doesn't make any sense when I, it's it's actively my only counter spell. If they want to trade Bob for Ragavan, I think that is acceptable. Sure. So now I could have a Ragavan if I want one as well. Well, you're not thinking about I get to loot on my opponent's turn as well, right? Like, uh, Bobble Bobble is draw two, but Loot and Shredder is also going to be draw two. Like, uh, Bobble plus Shredder plus Loot on their turn is draw two, uh, as well as more draws in the future. So I, I, I think I disagree. I am not blocking with the Voidwalker, so I can hold up its activated ability and cast the Pyroblast that is currently exiled underneath it. They got a Black Lotus on top of their library. I also have, like, can guarantee I cast two spells next turn with Gush Shre uh, Dress Down, so it's two loots off of Shredder. So, I don't, I, I'm still a little worried about dying, to be perfectly honest.
Like we we just didn't hit forces. Should be interesting. All right, that's technically a force. Uh, but not for this turn. It's a hundred percent basically that our opponent is going to let this shredder trigger twice unless they pyroblast it or something. So they're gonna they are going to pyroblast my shredder. Um I don't want to dress down because it'll turn off my void walker. I don't want to gush because it's just not very good here where I need my mana. So I, I'm just going to let this happen. It's okay. My opponent now has four cards in hand and one is a Black Lotus. I don't get to loot, unfortunately. So it did end up being... But my opponent also used a Pyroblast. Oh my, that is bad. Okay. Um. Now am I going to gush? Well, now I wish I had gushed in response because I don't really want my Lurus to die. Yeah, that's kind of why I didn't. Fuck. Ah, uh, I think I just have to let this happen as well. Uh, yeah. If I do play therapy, then you would want uh, Mishra, uh, Urza's bobble for sure. But I think current, I think currently I, the bobble is definitely Mishra's is better because like it helps me choose the spell. So my opponent only has two cards now, and I'm gonna have a million cards. Uh, after I just do the things and cast the spells. So, what the hell kind of order am I casting these spells in? I have so many choices. Uh, I think I'm going to want to fetch to get more cards in my yard for dig. I'm going to want to probably get a force off of my merchant scroll. Um... I think it's better than getting Ancestral. I'm going to dig. So they have another Pyroblast here. I think that's just fine, right? I don't know if I really care. Doesn't feel like I care. Um, let's, now I don't think I need to hold up my Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, I'm just going to attack and start clocking my opponent. Uh, I'm just going to play top and pass. So my opponent has one card in hand. They're top decking one card. I have access to Force Gush, Dress Down. My opponent has no access to their graveyard with a Void Walker currently in play. They're at eight life, so they don't have great Tinker Citadel lines. This is annoying. But it does mean I have an Ancestral underneath my Void Walker. If I counter it and successfully... Oh, I wanted to order that with the pedal above, but that's fine. I'm going to force this pitching the dress down. My opponent will have to have another Pyroblast. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, so they currently have 5 mana. So even if I were to gush and play Flusterstorm, it's not enough to actually counter this. I guess attacking with the Voidwalker was bad. Fuck. Um, I don't know if making them spend the mana is actually good, to be honest. I'm, I'm just going to let this happen. I, Ancestral Pyroblast, as their two cards after top deck, was pretty rough. All right, so they have infinite mana. <laughs> um, start by gushing. Right. 
Uh, do I want to just use a red mana here? Maybe, eh, maybe not. Well, I knew the fluster was on top. I just wasn't good enough. They had five mana. I couldn't even gush into like gush, gush into fluster wasn't good enough. Another void walker. I kind of want that. Definitely doesn't use my mana very well, but probably yeah, maybe playing all these is stupid. Um, I I think I'm gonna hold open Pyroblast. Maybe that's silly because it would have been a two turn clock. But I just have no way to stop them from doing. Like if they play Tinker, I guess I would beat Tinker. Why? Well, I, I should have attacked. I should have attacked. I should have attacked. I should just have attacked. Uh, not attacking there was probably just silly. But now I get to hold it open and attack, so there are upsides. I don't... It's not for free, because I lose my Dothy. I, I, I don't want to lose my Dothy. I don't think that's good. Uh, it's not for free. No, now I think I'm going to attack with one Voidwalker. Because these are unblockable, I can hold open counter magic, and then I kill them on the on the swing back. I think I'm going to fetch away this current... Oh, do I even have a land to fetch? I have an island, right? My last card is an island, yeah. Um, geez, I'm trying to find a force. Okay, I got it. Dark confidence. Yeah, no, I, I want to. No, no, I'm just going to attack with one void walker, which is going to let me put them to five, and then I get to hold open all my count, all their counter spells that I have. Uh, and then if they can't kill me, then I can attack with both void walkers and kill them because they have shadow. Uh, I will just draw this. Bob, though, this feels reasonable. Maybe I'm not supposed to draw Bob because they could play a Hull Breacher in response? Hmm, I don't know. Probably fine. Bob also technically threatens lethal if I have to use a Voidwalker, but not really because they have a creature to block. All right, so if my opponent has nothing here, then I attack with both Voidwalkers and win... I'm just trying to find, like, a force just to have, like, an additional piece of counter magic here. Okay, Ancestral... I'm gonna not Ancestral right away because I don't want to turn on something bad. I think I just want to attack with these Voidwalkers and make them have an answer. What is their answer? That doesn't... Okay, these have Shadow. Aha, uh -huh, no, you can't block. No, 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 those have Shadow, friend. Wow, what a game. Uh, wow. Okay, cool. That... Wow. I don't... I, I probably played that badly. I'll have to go back and watch that at some later point. Yeah, this is... Yeah, that is, that is definitely true. The matches are tough, but they're very, it feels very nice when you win. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> wow. All right. We're back in here with another treat for, for both YouTube and Twitch. We're up against Absorbent 3, who is uh, the very famous red green stompy player, uh, root maze, burning tree emissaries, uh, all kinds of fun stuff. Let's see how we do. I have not mapped out my mono green stomp, uh, my green red stompy matchup. So this is no lands though. So we can definitely put that hand back. This one is, um, this is begging to get collector oofed. I'd like to put this one back as well. What the fuck? <sighs> Excuse me. All right. Well, none of my uh, opening hands have had any lands in them. I feel like I should get a free mulligan or something here. Uh, my opponent mulligan to six and capped. I have to go to four. Yeah, I guess that's the one. Let's put this top and this land, this cling to dusk and this land. Oh, maybe I'm supposed to hold this bobble for my shredder. I just thought it was better to find a good card. That was probably wrong though. 
fluster storm. Like I don't want a fluster storm against my opponent, which is why I did this. But now I actually have to fetch a. I put the. I even put the wrong one in. Okay, so I did all the things wrong I possibly could have done there. I do think what I wanted to do was play fetch land go, but I should have played. Uh, I should have played the other fetch land so I could fetch basic island, and then I. Uh, ooh, ooh. Oh. Okay. All right. Yo. What's up, Luis? How are you doing? All right, so here comes my opponent, Starmagoyf. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like the mono green Stompy deck is going to kick our ass. <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't have very many cards to cycle. Ooh, I actually think it's probably better for us to get this Bob in play than to have a Shredder. We kind of need cards. I don't have very much removal in my main, so... I and I don't really have ways to kill a Tarmogoy. <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, it's gonna be a tough one. I I'm just not exactly set up to beat the random creature deck. No, come on! Strip mine? After I fetch both basics? Uh, every time, man. Every time. Ah, yes, the Void Mirror. Fantastic. Well, my forces are turned off. Uh... Alright, so I'm going to play the Ledger Shredder this turn so that I can block the Tarmogoyf, I guess. I don't know, man. I'm going to die, okay? I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I love playing against this pilot because they always surprise me with some interesting card choices. Oh, there's planes now. What does that mean? Second Tarmogoyf is not good for the home team either. <laughs> Graph Digger's Cage. Can do some looting. Uh, I do think I want a counter, so I don't know if I can trust a Bob here. I'm going to put this Bob. All right, so my opponent is on... Man, they even have a nice Mox Sapphire. All right, what does this Bob hit? Another Bob, all right. Another Ledger Shredder. Okay. All right, I'm going to get another Ledger Shredder in play. I think, I guess. They have one card in hand. I'm just a little worried that at some point these Tarmogoyfs will be too big. But if our Shredders are... A Dryad Militant. Okay. Are they going to attack? They're not. I, I, I understand that D, uh, Dig Through Time could be a nice trap against a Tarmogoyf attack, but I'm also worried my opponent will never attack. Also, Dryad Militant Tarmogoyf, not a combo. <laughs> I'm going to die to my Bob, though, aren't I? <laughs> uh... All right. Okay. Mishra's Bobble. Fine. Fine. Mishra's Bobble would get countered, though, so we don't really want to play Mishra's Bobble. I don't really want to play Bob, either. Uh, I can't block... Oh, God damn. If I, can, I can't block if I get Luris, but if they don't attack, it's fine. I feel like I'm supposed to get a Luris, then. Oi, oi, oi. I can always block with my Bob if they attack. <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep both Shredders back. This way I can block a Tarmogoyf and a Dryad Militant. Uh, <laughs> what is happening? Okay, yeah. You also have a Dampening Sphere. Okay, fair, fair, fair. They have new cards from the last time we've played. I think we just need as many birds as big as they can possibly get. Oh, they're coming in now. Okay, all right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of the Bob. I'm going to get rid of the Bob. Uh, and that way I can, I can try to kill these Tarmogoyfs next turn.
All right, if I can hit a land would be my ideal. Maybe I was supposed to keep Bob. All right, so I can just use both of these bobbles. Uh, because I can just, because I can't get rid of lands anyways, right? So I could play Bubble, Bobble, Bobble, trigger my shredders. Oh my god, am I going to be able to do the dig through time trick if I do all of this, though? Uh, maybe I just play Bob and pass. Oh my god, I can't play Bobble, Bobble because I have to pay extra mana. Oh wait, Luris doesn't even bring things back from the yard because there's a cage. Um, this hurts my head. Okay, I'm gonna fetch and play a bob. Oh, I can beat Void Mirror by, because of because of dampening sphere. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I can do that. You're not wrong. Oh, you're right. This is only stopping creature. None of these cards do anything. I feel like these are all the worst possible hate pieces that you could think of in the in format. So, chat is all... Chat is on board. Like, this means that it doesn't stop Bobble. This means I can pay one for my Bobbles to get them through Void Mirror. Okay, so... I block with my shredder and I block with my shredder and then I dig and that works. Yeah, I think that works. Yeah, block with shredder, block with shredder, and then I dig and get rid of creature and bobble. And then, oh, I guess I don't get to kill this Tarmogoyf. I should have probably blocked with this Bob then. Cage stops. Oh no, this is spells. You're wrong. You're right. This is not creature spells. Creatures from the graveyard or library can't enter the battlefield, but I can't cast spells from my yard. All right, so cage does stop bobble. All right, infernal grasp is one of my only ways to kill things, so I'm gonna definitely take infernal grasp. Uh, and I I, I can't imagine they're on scoozes if they're on like tarmogoyfs, dried miltons, and stuff. But I'm gonna take this infernal grasp, and I'm gonna take a a um a sensei's top for my bob and i'm gonna kill one of the uh, tarmogoyfs i'm gonna kill one tarmogoyf i should have probably a block with bob and killed both tarmogoyfs but i i messed up okay another dryad militant all right so so far ledger shredder is the key All right, one damage. That's good. Uh, okay, so what do I want to do? So I think what we want to do is play a top and then play a ruby paying the one. Yeah, so I'm going to go play a top. And then I'm going to play a ruby and I'm going to pay the one. And that will not get countered. And then I can loot away. Oh my God, a Dothy Voidwalker. Oh, wait. Okay, no, it's still fine. So I could loot away... What the hell? Um... I should just loot away Bobble Bobble. That would make the Tarmogoyf three five <laughs> do i have a main deck answer to cage no yeah i do it's called a ledger shredder all right uh this is a multifor yeah but my opponent is also on a file all right can i get an attack in now i can get in for the air yeah yeah let's go in from the air my opponent's deck makes you do a lot of thinking Connive does not get countered, uh, thankfully. That's why I really like Ledger Shredder, because it's a graveyard enabler, but it's also a card that beats graveyard hate. Big, big freaking bird brain. 
Okay, so where does this leave us? This leaves us with... Maybe I needed to keep this back to block Dryad Militants. It's okay, we have extra creatures. I also have an Infernal Grasp. So I can Infernal Grasp the Tarmogoyf. That puts me to 7. And then I can block block on the two Dryad Militants. And then... I don't even have to worry. I think we win. Uh-oh. Simeon Spirit Guide? Simeon Spirit Guide in the Forest Plains deck to cast Simeon Spirit. Okay, sure. You got it, homie. Uh, sure, why not? Let's go cruising. I would have hit cruise? No, I would have spun. I would have spun. It was fine. It was fine. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to do this. I don't know. It just sounds like fun. Maybe I don't want to do that. And I just want to play creatures again. Tread. Tread. I mean, I don't need a Void Walker to clock him. I have seven power in the air right now. So as long as I spin and don't die to my Dark Confidant, then I have lethal on the next turn here. Man, bird, bird brain, bird, bird man, bird, bird, bird accountant. Really something else. All right, so Bob trigger on the stack, spin my top. Uh, put the land on top. Take zero damage. Kill my opponent. Well, the reason my opponent... like So I don't think... like uh, Let's preface this by saying I don't like my opponent's deck. I don't think it's a very strong deck. But the reason that a deck like my opponent's deck can win in Vintage even though the cards are not a modern power level, is because vintage decks fold very hard to pieces of hate. Like, when you play a Void Mirror against, like, a PO deck on turn one, it makes it very hard for them to play. When you play a Root Maze against a Breach deck, it makes it very hard for them to play. Uh, you know, same with, like, a Dryad Militant, um, Dampening Sphere, like, Stony Silence, uh, Null Rod. These kind of cards have much higher impact in vintage, so a deck that is featuring a bunch of hate pieces actually can be more playable in Vintage, even though it looks like it wouldn't win against a modern deck, right? Void Mirror against Hollow Vine is, is absolutely great. They only can uh, Venge Vine you. Yeah, that's the idea anyways. Um, my, my, I, like, like I said, I don't think the way my, current, my opponent's deck is configured is the best way you can do that. But I don't think it's like a... Um, I don't think the logic behind their deck building is a path that is not acceptable or like a path that leads to nowhere. I think it's actually a path that leads to a, a deck that does things. I just don't think their specific deck does what it needs to do. Like maybe if they're splashing white for like Archon of Emeria, that's a card that I think is quite powerful. Um, that would be a nice start. But yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Engineered Explosives, and I'm going to bring in Deadweight, uh, and I'm going to bring in Seal of Removal for Tarmogoyf. Uh, so I have, like, a nice little removal suite here. And then I'm going to bring in maybe Caracas. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to bring in Caracas yet. Yeah, I, I think if you build a deck that has four Collector Groups and four Archon of Amiria, you're probably on a good start to a deck that hoses a ton of Vintage decks. Uh, I'm gonna board out Mindbreak Trap, Negation, uh, Fluster Storms. I guess that's a pretty good start. Yeah, let's do that. Sure, let's do this. 
No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm not even, I'm not even like being like nice about it. Like I, I honestly believe that decks that are constructed playing like uh, fast mana and hate pieces can be good in vintage. Like the, this deck um, is not even, this deck is not even like a, this deck is the kind of an example of it. Like ramping out uh, turn one Blood Moon, I actually think can win you a large percentage of vintage games. Um, and I even have played the, like the Archon and uh, Archon plus Bur uh, Collector Roof decks before. Uh, uh, there's totally, there's totally merit to that idea. All right, I'm going to keep this hand. Forest. Go. I don't like Breach Combo. I think Breach Combo is not a very strong... I, I don't like Breach Combo. That's kind of the end-all be-all, I think. I think like breach combo over ex exposes you and makes you play like bad cards in your deck. I don't think brain freeze is a good card. I also don't think a card underworld breach is like particularly amazing. It's okay. Um, I'm like more of a yog will fan than an underworld breach fan. I'm gonna get this basic swamp, and then I'm gonna play a bob. I think that's the most uh, powerful play I can make here. I also think I don't want to be a third color. Like I, I don't want to. Like people have said, be Esper, be Grixis. I actually think there's a lot of value in being just blue black, especially like double basics. All right, so this is perfect. I'm gonna go. Um, I'm gonna get my basic island, and I'm gonna go time walk. I'm not gonna attack yet. Uh, I, I just want to make sure I cash in my cards with Dark Confidant. Did I just take five from Force of Will? That could be bad. No, no, no. I actually think, like, Luris is extremely good in our deck. And I don't think Murktide is what makes this, would make this deck better. I don't know if playing two Bobs here is, uh, too ambitious. I don't want to play Arkham's Astral. That card is, I don't think that card is powerful enough. Um fuck. Oh, can I play a second Bob here? Yeah, why not? Let's play a Bob. Simeon Spirit Guide. I'm a little worried about having two bobs in play here, but... I mean, next turn I'm getting Luris into my hand and then playing it. I wish I had triggered Pearl off a of bob. I, I don't... I, I don't think there are problems solved by a third color. Like, what? Like, what, do you, what, 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 what are we solving by putting a third color in our deck? So I've been I've been over this, uh, Raphael. Like, yes, there are digging crews in this deck, but the average CMC of this deck is under two. I think it's quite good. I think it's actually quite reasonable. Don't want the scavenging used to resolve. The average CMC of my deck is uh one point nine eight. I also have Brainstorm now to fix my top. Yeah, these decks are just like very bad at beating Bazaar. Uh, I don't think like adding a third color fixes that, but I'm not sure like what adding a third color fixes in terms of other decks. 
like you get access to swords which is going to give you like better re removal spell than um infernal grasp and like maybe prismatic ending hits some things that you can't already hit but i don't know i, I think overexposing your mana base when you can have like double basics is really powerful like I, I don't know i don't really like the idea of having third color at all like if i have to play astrolabe to play a third color i definitely don't want to do that uh, astrolabe is not a card i'm interested in playing I am definitely worried about these bobs killing me, but I have Brainstorm for at least a turn here, which will give me, like, you know, at most three. What the fuck is that? Uh, a Grist, the Hunger Tide. As long as Grist is not on the battlefield, it's a creature, but if it's on the battlefield, it's a Planeswalker. You mill, you create an insect and mill a card. If you mill an insect, you get another one. You can sack an insect and kill a creature. Okay. That's, like, pretty good against my two ones, I guess. But I have a dead weight, so... Alright, like, look at this shit. Look at this. Put this on top, put this on top. There's barely any wastelands. What what magic have you been playing? I get wastelanded all day. Okay, so I now have. Okay, so what I get to do here is I get to go Luris, deadweight the insect, kill the grisp, deadweight my dark confidant. Luris. Dead weight this insect. Kill your grist. Play a bobble. Look at your top card. Bird of Paradise? Okay. No, I think third color will make you worse against shops. I'm gonna I'm gonna deadweight one of my bobs. This way I can only die to a dig through time, right? Oh, I can I have this way I only have two cards that kill me. In my whole deck. And then once I hit with Luris, I will be safe. I do have two hits in my deck that kill me, which is worth noting, but... Oh, Ignoble Hierarch. I, these are just random magic cards, are they not? What is this? Are you still lightning bolt on my Luris? Is this Simeon Spirit Guide pitched for Simeon Spirit Guide? Fair. Okay. Bobble myself... Oh, because I have a fetch land. No, wait, Bobble Myself doesn't do anything. Oh, you mean don't use Bobble, use it on their turn, Bobble Myself? Yeah, I should have done that. I should have done that. So if I don't use Bobble on my turn... No, but then, oh, then I have to stack the triggers, I guess? Yeah. Okay, that was probably better. All right, so two out of 36 are kills. Nope, that's a Bob. Uh, though, unfortunately, oh, we hit top. All right, so the game is over now. We are locked up. Um, so I'm just going to deadweight their Simeon Spirit Guide and then attack. All right, we are in a great spot now. Um... I could even like bounce Luris and replay Luris, but uh, we're good. We're just good to go here. Like, see, like, Bob is dicey sometimes, but you have so many tools. I don't know. I'm just going to force this. I don't know. I, I think it's totally fine. I think everyone's just scared. Didn't, don't you know that greatness comes at any cost? Greatness at any 
You're not going to find greatness, chat, if you don't believe. Uh, cool. I like Outland Liberator. That's another card that I would definitely include in my Hate Bears deck. Really strong magic card, actually. All right. The Deadweight Recursion. I love Deadweight Recursion. It's such a good time. No, there's no reason to play Bob's. We have our game locked up right now. We saw a lot of different cards in game one than we did in game two. But I guess they probably board out all of their like crazy hate pieces because they're not good against us and they probably board in some duders, maybe? What is this? Ah. I mean, you're still dead on board, yeah? Oh, I guess you're not dead on board. Ah. Oh, wait, no. I can actually prismatic ending your bird. <laughs> oh, wait, no. That's not actually good enough. Um, yeah, we could have done that. We could have done that. That's definitely true. It's fine. It's not a big deal. All right. I'll just bounce this line. Uh. Alright, so I take two off this Bob, and then I play my Luris. Yo, what's up? Hope you had a good stream. We're having a we're having a great time tonight. This has been a fun one. Looping dress uh looping dead weights with our Luris. <sighs> a beautiful thing. A beautiful thing. This was fun. Oof, man. Alright, one more. One more. Let's do one more. Okay, here we go. Fifth. Final round with our deck. We're up against Utopia, who's been trying out some stuff. I don't know what they're on right now, but let's see what they got. Uh, this hand is sweet. Nice keeper. I'll always, pretty much always keep turn one Bob. I think that's like what our deck is designed to do, especially if we get to follow up by drawing two cards with Time Walk. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking that we might cut the cling to cling to the cling to dust and play a sanctuary instead. This way we get uh, access to, to time walking again. We also get access to gush loops. Um, I think it just makes sense to play a sanctuary. I I just don't like. I just don't think lantern's good. Like I, I don't think lantern is good. I don't think I, it's worthwhile to play soul guide lantern in your main. I just don't think it's good enough. Like I, I think the bobble is actively better, just enabling shredder. I'm gonna fetch my basic here. Don't know if my opponent's gonna wasteland me. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing okay. I got a, I got a bunch of sweet weekends coming up. Going to New York City, going to Boston. I haven't really been traveling or doing anything fun in the last couple of years, so it's gonna be my first fure out into the wilderness again. Um. Oh god, are we playing against Bant? So I'm 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 excited. Yeah, no, actually, one of the weekends is an anime weekend. I'm gonna be going to Anime Boston, and I'm gonna be going to uh, a concert in New York City. I'm I'm pretty excited. Spending some time with my girlfriend. It's gonna be good. Oh, what a turn! Black Lotus, Death Ray Shaman, Death Ray Shaman, Prismatic Ending, your bomb. 
so yeah, I don't have um I don't I won't be able to stream the next two weekends, and then I will be able to stream the weekend of four uh not four seasons, what's it called? Uh yeah, four seasons. Unfortunately, like unfortunately, like it's really hard for me to go to the four seasons because I'm gonna be traveling the three weekends around it. So uh, I won't be going to four seasons, but I'll stream challenge that weekend and and host the four seasons uh, on my stream if they have a, a live stream. Actually, probably won't. Yeah, yeah, I'll probably do that, and then. And then the weekend after that, uh, I'm going to be going to like Ann Arbor for a bachelor thing. It's going to be fun. Hmm. So now I have access to, I can go Demonic, Lotus, Star Confidant, Time Walk. I can go Demonic, Ancestral. Oh, no, Saga was so bad. Like if you're going to play Saga, play four. But uh, Saga like made it so I couldn't cast my spells. I didn't get loot trigger. Uh, can I plus one plus one counters? I hate Saga. It's just a, it's just not what it's not what I want to be doing in Magic. It's it, it it overexposes you to every single piece of hate and vintage, and doesn't give you like nearly enough power to be worth it. All right, so I, I gotta stop uh, and talking and actually figure out how to play this. Um, there's like a lot of value in a lot of choices here. I could even go demonic for Lotus and play Dark Confidant Dothy Voidwalker. Uh, I, I I haven't, and I haven't. You sure you maybe maybe Saga's fine for you, but for me, Saga was an active liability, lost me games of Magic, and didn't win me games of Magic. So I'm just I will not play Saga in my deck. Like that's just the end of it. Uh. I think I'm just going to Demonic for a Black Lotus and play two creatures, and then I can Time Walk on the next turn. Yeah, well, I, like I, it's not even that I haven't tried Saga in the deck. I tried Saga in the deck, and it was actively bad. <laughs> All right, so my opponent has a Force and a Ledger Shredder. So is this the legendary uh, Ledger Shredder Archon of Amiria deck? Is that what's happening here? So unfortunately, my opponent having Force of Will for my Le Dark Confidant means I am actually out of like. Like, if I had a Saga here, it just gets wastelanded. Ugh, so bad. No, it, what the f- there's an Edric? Oh, no. Oh, no. That's so bad for me. Holy shit. Okay, yeah, um, this is really bad. All right, I gotta stop talking about whatever chat had me on. Uh, hmm. Check out me all riled up, suggesting for me to play fucking terrible magic cards that make my deck worse. Urgh. Oh, nice. This worked out, I guess. So hopefully I can go Shredder Emerald hit a hit a hit something uh, that makes this bigger so I can block anything they attack with. Perfect. I like Edric's a cool card. I forget I had a commander deck with Edric at one point in life. So it seems my opponent's changed up the deck at least a little bit. But I'm very happy with my two basics here. I can't get Wastelanded. I can get uh, a Lurus, but I can't play the Lurus yet until I find another land. Um, but once I do, I can get back my Lotus. The good news is my opponent only has one card in hand. So to get in and get a card, they have to attack uh, into my lethal. Not lethal, but um, a Lunger Trader that kills them. Oh...
All right, so what did my opponent top deck for turn? Probably land, and then they drew something from Edric last turn. Yo, how's it going? This deck is sweet. I really enjoy this deck, and I think there's a lot of people who probably will enjoy it even more than me. <laughs> All right, so this Ledger Shredder made it, so it was a no attack. That's really good. Um, I kind of want to just draw more. Okay, I'm just going to snap that off right now. Obviously, I lose my Black Lotus, but I think, like, turning off their Deathrite Shamans is so good. I, I could I could obviously keep my Black Lotus and, and pay one more, but that exposes me to Flusterstorm, which I don't think there's any reason to do that. Um, interesting. Interesting. Interesting hand. Um, hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I have Bobble triggers Ledger Shredder. I just want another Ledger Shredder. Um, but I could always go Petal Shredder, and then I get another Shredder in play. Hmm. I think it's better for me to get creatures in play right now. Like maybe this is like this is kind of spewing a little bit. No, no, I think it's Shredder Petal. I think being able to get a second Shredder in play right now is way stronger. Um because no, uh, because if my opponent I don't want my opponent to ever be able to attack and uh and draw cards. Mm, like obviously. Like Shredder Bobble and those kind of things are higher, uh, like long term value plays. I mean, Petal is still fine with Loda, uh, with Luris. But I can't play. Well, Petal, Delta is not better than Petal because Delta gets wastelanded. Um. Mm. I don't know. I really think playing a Shredder right now is good. Like, if my opponent could just attack and draw cards and get out of this game. Yeah, I'm going to go with my... my gut here. I pedal... What do you want? You want to go Delta Merchant for Gush? I can't... I can't do that. They would just Wasteland in response. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with my gut here. Chat has a lot of opinions here, and I think there's totally merit to a bunch of them. But I'm just gonna go with my gut here. Um, another Void Walker. Okay. Like I think actively having the double blocks and attacking my opponent with the unblockable Void Walker four turn clock is what I want to be doing right now. I think giving them draws would be really silly. Um, so ha having the double flying blockers here makes the most sense to me. If I was my opponent, I would definitely eat the Void Walker to go to 11. That's going to give them an additional turn. Like Obviously, this puts us at the lowest amount. Oh, wow. That is an interesting gush. I don't know if I would have gushed on that, my turn. I... Don't think we attack with Shredder this turn. It's definitely possible we attack with Shredder next turn. But attacking with Shredder this turn only puts them to 9, and it's not actually... It doesn't change the clock. And, I, and I, like I said, I don't want to give them too many draws. And I don't exactly know what's in my opponent's deck either. But, like, right now, they, they have to invest way too much to attack into me. I guess I was a lot worried about uh, turning off Deathrite Shaman, but I didn't even—they don't even have a black mana. Dress down. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, hmm. Okay, so here I'm just going to attack. Put lethal on the table, and if they go for an attack, I'm just going to dress down and make it so they can't draw any cards. Mm-hmm. I actually probably should just dress down in upkeep so that they can't use these Deathrite Shaman. 
I won't get any ledger shredder triggers this way. But I, I think it's actually better for me to just use this right now. <laughs> You're also missing the upside of uh, Edric pitches to vigor and force of will, passion. I think that's super important. Okay, so this got forced. Mausoleum Wanderer? Oh. All right, so my opponent is going to draw two cards here. And I have to hope that that is... Oh, they're only going to draw one card here. Okay. Oh, okay. Pitching for Force of Vigor is incredibly important, I think. The if I'm gonna play a Deathrite Shaman deck, the reason like I think the biggest reason to play a Deathrite Shaman deck is to be able to play Force of Vigor. Um Force of Vigor is, is very is so good. I think the card is incredibly strong. Ancestral? Why would we wait till my turn to do Ancestral? I don't know why. So my opponent actually does. Uh, what I'm going to do is attack with both birds. And so I'm going to, if I can play around swords here by attacking with both birds, because the both birds together are lethal. And if my opponent were to counter or to cast swords, I could actually use my void walker and play a force of will. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're like Edric pitches to force of will as well. Like, some of these bug decks or, like, um, black, green, blue decks uh, plus another color are playing, like, four Force of Will, two Negation, two Vigor in the main. I think that's, like, very much a, a, a Yuta Takahashi thing, but, like, I have seen a list just today that was playing all eight of those forces, and Edric would pitch to both. Um, all right, so my opponent is playing some kind of um, Bant plus Deathrite Shaman tempo deck with mausoleum wanderer edric really interesting set of magic cards um didn't you know it seemed like it would work out pretty well uh i'm gonna bring in dead weights and engineered explosives we played against a lot of creature decks tonight uh and seal of removal and i'm gonna bring in caracas as well those these seem like the same cards we brought in the other time and then i i assume my opponent has some uh uh collector oops i'm gonna take out uh bobble negation trap um and cling to dust that seems reasonable to me <laughs> remember remember when i played the uh, uh the cold eye selkie that got reskinned as a uh, walking dead and i got to name my youtube video the walking dead breaks vintage that was a good time that was a fun deck to play for a little while too. It's totally playable. You can absolutely play a a a, a high arc silky style deck in vintage. Uh, Glenn. Yes, it was Glenn. That's the one. This looks fine. I'm I'm just gonna go with this. I'm getting a bit of a headache chat, and I'm I'm running out of steam here. But we're gonna finish this league strong. Um, much appreciate everyone for hanging out. Sorry about getting mad at Saga again. I'm just. Uh, it's a thing. This is an interesting hand. It's a very low power hand, but it's probably still a keep. This deck is so much fun, though. I can't wait. I'll probably put this video out not on Friday, but on Monday, just so I don't have too many of these videos in a row. I'll just get something else out on Friday. Ooh, they have a Moxin. I would love to draw a Moxin. Uh oh. Uh -uh. Oh, okay, sure. Hmm. Yeah, like I, I don't think these Voidwalkers are particularly good. Um, but they're definitely fine. They're like they're good enough. Like I'm not embarrassed to have this card in my deck, and it's been okay all night long. So, uh, I'll probably keep playing the Voidwalkers. So my opponent played three mana and passed. Does that mean they have a hole breacher? 
kind of unfortunate because I actually drew the mocks into play Shredder, but I don't think I'm allowed to play Shredder into like someone who's representing Holbrook. Maybe they're representing spirits. Maybe they're representing uh, Spell Queller. Yeah, I mean, Ma Voidwalker has had a good night. I would definitely say that's true. I'm going to play... I think I'm going to play Swamp Bobble Go. And I'm not going to activate this. Oh, my God. I'm just so worried. Hmm. Maybe this was bad. Oh, I mean, I should be able to. Oh, OK. Uh, this is fine. I think this is fine. I, I think playing Shredder and turning off force would be bad. I want to be able to counter a Hull Breacher there if they had one. My opponent drew another mana, which I'm sure they don't want to have drawn a mana here. I also now have a different spell I can pitch. Okay, so here is a play. What is their play? It's a gush. Wow. Okay, yeah, you got a gush. Okay. My opponent has played some powerful cards. They have eight in their hand, but three of them are mana. I feel really far behind. I'm a little stressed out about how far behind we are in this game. An endurance. Yeah, endurance is like a uh, kind of an annoying card, but Ledger Shredder outscale, uh, you know, outsizes it pretty quickly. So now I think what I'm gonna do, they're not even gonna play their Sapphire. Interesting. So now what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to play um, Underground Sea Shredder Ruby. Am I? I think maybe they have swords. I don't. I can just take three damage. Maybe I'll just play a Voidwalker. This way I could go like... Uh, Draw a blue card. Okay, yeah, this is fine. I don't really think I care about my Voidwalker getting sorted. Fields. I maybe maybe they're holding it to brainstorm away or something. Alright, so now if I can draw a blue card here, I can go Shredder Ruby Time Walk. I mean I still think I'm gonna go Shredder. Maybe I'll go, I get to go Sapphire and then maybe pitch this Ruby. Oh, okay. Maybe, mm. Mm. yeah, I'll just pitch this Ruby and then we'll time walk. I mean, this might just get flustered to be fair. I mean, I still think it's worth trying. Okay. I don't think a... Ooh, that's a sweet draw as well. Okay. Uh, I'm just gonna put the Luris in my hand. Shouldn't need to hold up in mana plus flat force. I'm just gonna not attack. Um, I think I'm in a controlling position, and I don't need to take. Maybe I, maybe attacking for two is fine. Maybe attacking for two is better because I have twenty. Yeah, I probably should attack more than I do. With this deck, I always feel like I have these huge butts. I can just block forever and, and outvalue my opponent, but maybe that's not a really good way to play all the time. What is this again? Okay, so this is like a, a Merfolk. It's like a it's like a, a, a curse catcher on steroids. What? How could you be doubtful on Shredder? Shredder is the the glue here. Shredder is the reason. Shredder is the guts and the glory. So unfortunately, tapping out. 
does mean my force of will gets countered by this mausoleum wanderer, so I can't actually save my shredder, but that's okay. Wow, that is a lot of lands. I think I need to get rid of this fetch land, actually, because I don't have to have very many fetchables left. Oh my god, okay, all the fetch lands, yeah. All right, so... I did lose out on two damage in this exchange. Uh, the good news is I now have Luris and Force back up. It's like a bent tempo y pile thing. I don't think they have more spirits than Wanderer, but. All right, let's cast this. Trigger Shredder. Ancestral? Ooh. Okay. I guess I'll just try to Ancestral, right? That's okay. I want to keep. I want to play this because I want to be able to pay for this stupid Mausoleum Wanderer. Did they not draw? They have a whole Breacher on top. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. I mean, I have Forces and I have Grasp, so as long as I play this smart, it should be fine. They get to get another attack in, unless they want to stop this Lurus. It's fine. All right, so... I am going to start by playing a Shredder. And then I'm going to play a Bobble. And they're going to play a whole Breacher, and I am going to force this whole Breacher. Uh, I want to start by... For am I going to start by forcing or just start by Infernal Grasping? I guess I just start by Infernal Grasping. I guess this loses to Fluster now. Oh, I fucked up, dude. I actually lose to Fluster. Okay, I should I should have forced to start and then... then uh, Oh, and then and then Grasp. I'm, I'm just... I'm running on Fumes chat. Sorry. Not playing very well. Yo, thanks, Quintus. Much appreciated. I'm just gonna get rid of this Dark Confidant. I don't think it's necessary at this point. Um, yeah, I I'm just not playing very well. I could play a little tighter. Um, all right, so I can actually cast this Merchant Scroll, and I can get. Uh, why don't we get a Fluster Storm? Sure, that's fine. Uh, and then I'm going to get in with at least Luris. I can just get in with everything, right? Yeah, let's just get in. We are now in the controlling position. My opponent's about to draw a land, and they have a Sapphire in hand. We have a Force and a Fluster. I'm just trying to be cognizant of this stupid uh, Mausoleum Wanderer. Why not pay for... Oh, pay for Force. Pay for Force is bad because of um, Flusterstorm and Mausoleum Wonder. I was going to pitch cast Force on Hullbreacher. I think pitch casting Force on Hullbreacher was the best choice. Um, but I, I was just kind of... Uh, kind of thing. GG's. Well, I was super impressed by our deck today. Obviously, we played against some Brews, but the only thing we lost to was DPS PO thing. I guess it wasn't really DPS. It was a PO DPS hybrid deck. I don't know what that means, but it's something. It was crazy. It was a good league. We got to do some cool things. Um, there were some really awesome hard fought victories. So again, we we are cutting the cling to dust, and we're trying to play a sanctuary instead this time. Um, and that was the only change I think I'm going to make. There are some other things to think about. If like, We did provide a way to flashback using Sanctuary. So we did address that issue. Um, we, we added a card for... An, I took out the Counterbalance for an Infernal Reckoning to help for Shop's matchup. I wasn't super happy with the Counterbalance anyways. And then we still don't have a sack outlet for our Dark Rock Confidant. But I think... 
I do think that counterbalance is playable, Trouts. I actually think the best place in Vintage for counterbalance is in the sideboard of Pio. Because, um, because uh, it's a nice mirror breaker, and you are the best Sensei's top deck in the format. I actually really like two, like a counterbalance in the sideboard of Pio is a nice little mirror breaker. I, I no, I actually think counterbalance is totally playable in Vintage. Um, it takes a little work, but uh, you can make it work. Here, I think I just didn't have enough cards to make it work. Uh, and so Feed the Swarm is definitely something we can consider as well. So, I mean, we addressed some of the concerns. I think I like the changes we made. This is the list I would recommend going forward. Uh, and, man, I'm definitely going to play more of this because it is just a great time. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. Uh, if you like what you see, make sure you comment on your YouTube channel, like on the YouTube thing. All of those things are free ways you can help support the stream, and I appreciate that. See you in the next one.